Hola chicos, I'm Paul. And I'm Bea. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the things that you should look out for when you are hunting for apartments in Spain. We've been living in Valencia for almost a year now and we have seen a lot of homes when we were looking for apartments and then from the apartments of our, of our friends. And we have to tell you that, you know, looks can be deceiving, especially when you're looking at it from a website and you go to the apartment. So in this video, we can't wait to show you what our tips are after the intro. Of course, is location, location, location. Any businessman will tell you if you're opening up a store that the location matters. I believe that that goes the same for your home. Think about where you want to be. If you want to be near the beach, that means that you are not close to the city center, so you're farther from a lot of the action if there are things happening at the community. Think also if you if it's close to the airport, how long will it take you to get there if you're the type who travels a lot? Or if you have visitors a lot, will, will you need to take a cab or will you need to take the metro like we do? Is it walkable? Most of Valencia is walkable, but is it close to a market or schools or church or anything that's important to you guys? Like for us, it was the vet. So there was an English speaking vet. Um, I think like on the next street over, so that was important to us. Getting an Airbnb first to try out the areas would really help, especially if you're not going in and out of Spain. Finding out all these neighborhoods and communities through an Airbnb would probably be a good idea. Yeah, you get a real feel of the city when you uh, go stay at an Airbnb. When we were looking at apartments in Idealista, we had put hearts on the, the ones that we thought that were good and were our favorites. But now when we look at the map again and revisit those areas where the apartments were, we were like, eh, I'm glad we didn't end up there. So um, it really does depend on your preference. Kind of like us, we our goal was to travel a lot, at least like try to travel as much as we can. So we wanted to be close to the, the airport, which is uh, just a metro ride away. And then we wanted to visit like the other cities in Spain, which is we're, so we're really close to the train station, which is the main train station here. So those things you have to like figure out if you what you want. Next one is street noise. We named it street noise because to some it's noise, to some it isn't. But generally it's noise pollution because it also includes the sound of the traffic outside and the sound of the garbage trucks passing by um, people like to honk their horn here so that's kind of like included in the noise pollution but also there's a lot of bars downstairs when you live in an apartment in spain so the bars are everywhere and the part of the noise pollution is not the music because they don't play music here at the bars it's the people talking to each other non-stop they're very animated they like to express themselves with hands and gestures and it's very very alive um, you can feel a very excited buzz when you open your window but the con for that would be if you are very close to that bar and the bar does not close until 4 or 5 a.m then yeah it's a little that yeah. could get a little noisy at night they close at 4 or 5 a.m which means the people leave at around 7 so it there's there's no chance And, you know, here we, we live in Valencia, which is like the fireworks capital of Spain. And people like to... Uh... Throw their fireworks, yeah. yeah. They love to make additional sounds. <laughs> Any chance they get. So it's definitely lively, it's exciting, but 
if you need to sleep early, you might need to find a place that's a little bit farther from the bars. No party town. You might also want to consider if your apartment is in an interior or an exterior part of your building. An interior would mean that it is facing that courtyard called the Patio de Manzanas. And that might mean that you don't have a balcony or outdoor space. It could mean that, well, depending on how it, the building is um, situated or where your apartment is situated, but it could also mean less sunlight for you. Um, and then an exterior would mean that you're, you have the frontage of the building, your, um, your space is at that front of the building. So usually, um, while you might get a little bit more street noise, you might also get more sunlight um, because of the distance of your building versus the building across from you. And, you know, living in Spain, you kind of like want to have the sunlight. Oh, and you might get a balcony. So you might get some outdoor space if you have an exterior. A lot of a lot of the Spanish homes here have some sort of balcony in the front, but not necessarily in the back. Balcony. Next one is the floor location and how much it matters. The top floor or the attico usually has a larger patio, but I don't think all of the atticos have patios. But the bonus is that you don't have neighbors upstairs because you're on the top floor, so you won't really hear a bunch of noise. The floor below that, if it is not the same layout as the attico, then it's also an advantage for you because you won't really hear the noise from upstairs and usually from downstairs neighbors, you don't really hear a lot of noise. Yeah, I think because of how the layout is distributed, then if if you're in the living room maybe you know the person in the attico that's their kitchen or something so um might be nice that it's not directly in above you all the time like if you're in the living room and they're also in the living room if you're in the bedroom they're also in the bedroom so it's nice if it's a little bit off okay. also if you have a lower floor sometimes that means not just that you can hear more of the street but also that you might not get as much sunlight because you're lower. So the building in front of you might cast a shadow. So um, that might not also be ideal for some. This one is important to me, an elevator. So we made sure that we looked at apartments that had elevators. And imagine if you are the type who travel a lot and bring luggages or you have visitors often and they have luggages. Imagine if you have to bring them up a flight of stairs every time. So having an elevator and maybe even like factoring in the size of that elevator would be good. So when we moved in, we had a bunch of furniture that we had to have delivered. And it was nice that the guys had no trouble bringing in our mattress through our elevator because it was actually a nice big size. I think it can fit up to eight, like a sardines. <laughs> and when we went to Ikea and we bought a three drawer dresser, which is about a hundred centimeters long, we didn't, we were able to fit it in our elevator because it was a, it was a good size elevator. Yeah. And when, when we picked the elevator, it was also, we, tried to consider it for our dog because she was in a stroller. So not a lot of elevators was able to fit us three with the stroller in it. So, so he had to go up, up the stairs. Good thing we were living a floor. Just, with a floor just the up, one yeah. floor. Yeah, we were just living on the first floor. Which brings me to the floor number. So floor numbers in Spain is zero. That would be the ground floor. So that's street level. First floor is the first floor up the first flight of stairs. Second floor is like two flights of stairs up and then three flights of stairs. So when you're looking for an apartment, if it says it is Baja, that means it's on the ground floor. First floor would mean the primera or segunda would mean the second floor. So that's how things work here. And to you guys who are trying to buy or rent an apartment here in Spain, sight unseen, you have to know that the elevator is important and the floor number is important because we've seen people who said, oh, we're, it's only the third floor. We could, we could walk up the stairs. It's not a problem. No, it's, that's the fourth floor. And when you're bringing up furniture or a lot of groceries, 
No bueno. Can't do that every day. One thing that could also be important to you is the size of the apartment. They use square meters here in Spain and a good size apartment for a lot of American households will probably be about 100 square meters, 90 to 100 square meters at least. That's, I think, what a lot of Californians or people with houses are used to. But if you're living in a big city like, say, New York or Japan, then maybe that doesn't matter so much. So keep in mind that the square footage is in square meters. Just to give you a visual, uh, a two-car garage is about 400 square feet. So that means it's about... 37 square meters and like a king size bed is about 42 square feet so that's about 3.9 square meters so just so you have a visual because just like what we said you know you see these apartments on idealista and you're going to see the number and you're going to be like that seems a little small and then you go and it's not small or the other way around so you kind of like need to know the the measurements and visualize it metric system next one is furnished or unfurnished so to some people it's important to have a furnished apartment to some people they'd rather buy their own um, furniture so you you need to know all of these things sometimes from our experience the furniture that came with the apartment is a hit or miss sometimes it's old furniture or like i wouldn't want to sit there yeah so um we opted to have an unfurnished apartment well not that we opted but we were okay with getting something unfurnished as well we saw a lot of listings that were furnished but that wasn't a factor for us we were okay with also purchasing our own next is insulation so for a lot of the buildings made between like 1995 to 2009, they weren't really insulated very well. So a lot of the windows can be thin or single paned and um, the walls could also be very thin. The Airbnb that we stayed at, I was watching TV and my head was through the wall and then I just heard someone yawn. It felt like he was right next to me and I freaked out. I was like, oh. <laughs> So yeah, so it's very important. I mean, naturally, you know, if it's an apartment, you you are sharing a space with other people, with other families. So it is normal to hear some noise, but that was just a little too much for me. Like it was someone yawning, he wasn't shouting. So the walls are very, very thin. That happened at like a really decent time in the day. PM. Yeah. But sometimes in our in our Airbnb, we actually were awoken by um, someone who was, I thought, how, having a bad dream at around like five thirty in the morning. No, they were they were having a good dream. They were having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, these walls these walls are thin, and if, if these walls could talk. <laughs> But our apartment, um, thankfully, have thick walls. Um, we just yesterday, we started knocking on all of the walls to see which ones were concrete and which ones were hollow. Just so because I wanted to put some some artwork up or I wanted to put a mirror up. Um, so that's where we, fo we found out that our side of the apartment at least had a lot of concrete. Oh, walls. actually, the, the tenants here before us were complaining to the our neighbors upstairs because they were saying your your kids are so noisy and you're running up down and down the stairs but these two they don't have children they don't they don't run up and down <laughs> the hallway <laughs> so it turns out that uh the building right next to us has kids and you can we can kind of hear yeah, them a from, little from bit. our bedroom you can hear them like right. laughing and running and jumping and it really sounded like it was coming from our neighbors upstairs but no yeah, these buildings have thin walls too. Oh, and then in our Airbnb, we could hear at like 4 a.m. someone walking with heels on at 4 in the morning. And they're like, like across, like I feel like they're, she's walking this way and then walking that way and then walking this way and then walking that way for a long time, right? 
So I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're cleaning their homes or something. But At four in the morning? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I can totally hear it. And this mm. was every day. So too. if you are very sensitive to noise, maybe get an attico. <laughs> Next one is kind of like my favorite, but not really. Most of the windows here have no built-in screens. So when it's cold, it's great because um, our windows are double pane. So if we want it to be warm, we just close the windows, but then we could open it up a little bit if we want a little bit of air. But in the summer, we can't do that because it gets really hot and uh, there's mosquitoes or flies go in and out of the building of the the house and I, I really didn't enjoy that yeah so every time we want to open our our doors or like our balcony for a little bit like a big fly comes in so there's no screens to protect us from that um we did buy those magnetic screens but they just fell off so total fail yeah so that's just like maybe one of the weird things especially since um you know, you want to conserve some energy. We have a nice flow from the front of the house to the back of the house. Um, if we can, if we just keep them open, you know, it's great. But sometimes they, the flies do come in. I mean, you could, the magnetic screens might work on your window. But for us, I think it's because the sun is just too harsh on the windows. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll put the link in the description to, to show you with what we're talking about. Check also if your apartment has built-in AC or heating, like radiators or an HVAC or maybe even like the split type AC because it does get really warm in during the summer. I think that's more important. Right now we're in the middle of winter and the temperature has been very mild. So that hasn't been an issue. We haven't had to turn on our heaters. but. You know, you wouldn't want to be caught dead when it's very, very cold and you don't have any heating on, right? And most of the people that we talk to who um, are also looking for an apartment, they're actually surprised. We're actually surprised that there are units here that don't have AC or um, heating. There are a few appliances that you won't normally find here like the clothes dryer or the garbage disposal but also check if the apartment even provides you with the stove the oven or the washing machine and the dishwasher some apartments most apartments will have it but there were some that we saw that didn't have any appliance at all so not only did you have to provide your own furniture but you also had to buy your own appliances which is very expensive and um, from for some of the the listings that we visited, they didn't put uh, that the appliances are not available. So uh, you know, so it's just we had to. Do we didn't trip. notice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we didn't notice in like in the pictures. We didn't realize that there was no washer, no dryer, or no, not dryer. Like we didn't realize that there was no washing machine, no dishwasher until we got there. So do check or maybe ask if they have the kitchen appliances that's usually um or electro domesticos yeah when it's when it's uh when it's cheap cheaper than the usual make sure you take note of all these things <laughs> next one is what really surprised me was the layouts of some of the apartments here are weird it's like they made two bedrooms and then they added one room and then they added an extra room and then they added a patio and all of these things it has like a weird layout. So I, I've seen a kitchen where it's barely a kitchen, but they made it work. Or I've seen um, I've seen a living room that looks like a bedroom or you can yeah. make it into a bedroom and then use the other bedroom into a living room. So th those things... Uh, that was a little confusing for me. Right, like as individual rooms, they were okay. But when you see them in the layout, it was just a little bit weird. Like the kitchen was just enough, big enough for a kitchen and a dining table. And then the living room was really off somewhere else. I don't know. A little, I mean, if it doesn't matter to you, if you're quirky like that, hey. But it's good to know. Next is outdoor space. My dream as a kid was to have a balcony. To me, that was like a 
you made it. <laughs> so um, having a balcony, I think, is important or having outdoor space is important so that you can enjoy the outside without having to go down and out of your building. It's nice to enjoy some, you know, your morning coffee outside or maybe like I read a book outside. So having a balcony, I think, is a plus. Most apartments will have it not all of them will have it so if it matters to you then definitely take check out the the balcony like the size of it ours is just a very small balcony it's enough for us to just sit there we can't eat there we can't roll around <laughs> but we we visited one of these apartments and um they had a balcony in the pictures it looked great but then it turns out only half my foot can fit in the balcony <laughs> which balcony so was it? the the first one. Oh yeah so there's you know it's, it's a not really a <laughs> yeah. you can open it and then sit inside the house and look out the, <laughs> the i think balcony. it's just the the purpose of that is just so you can open the windows and be safe and you're not gonna like fall off right. or your dog's gonna jump off the window <laughs> or anything like that <laughs> Another thing to watch out for, so if you've already found, say, the area that you wanted and, you know, it can get a little busy, you want to check out where the bedrooms are located. So some bedrooms are fronting the street, some bedrooms are fronting the back of the building. So for us, we got lucky and our bedrooms are at the back of the building, so we don't really hear any noise. The only time it got really noisy was New Year's Eve, and I think the neighbor <laughs> right next to us was having a party. Like, the next building over was having a party. So, put on some noise-canceling headphones and fell asleep right away. Yeah, nothing nothing a bottle of wine can't fix. <laughs> Half a bottle of wine. <laughs> We're not winos. <laughs> not wine. <laughs> the next one is... It's really, really important Very, for us. very important. We've learned a huge lesson because most of the main doors here do not have doorknobs. So the only way to open these doors is through the key. Yeah. You turn the you, key you can't you turn push. a doorknob and open a door. No. If, if you close your apartment door, that's you can't open it from outside without a key. Yeah. Or if you leave your key on the other side... On the, the inside. Hole, on the inside of the keyhole and you leave and you have an extra key and then you try to open it up, it's not going to work. The key's not going to go in. So, yeah. We've, we've, most of the people we know here, happen, it happened to them at least <laughs> once. And the, the, the pay for someone to open the door ranges from 30 euros to how much did? Someone paid 400 euros. We paid 30. So. <laughs> yeah. So... That that knob on the door that you In see? the middle of the door. That's not a door That knob. doesn't open anything. That's, that's just for you to pull the door closed. Make sure it's right. closed. But that doesn't open anything. Yeah, you, so, can't, you can't kick doors here. So remember gonna, your keys. You can't kick doors here. You're going to ruin your ankle. And then if you have a car, it's important to know if the building has parking or if there's parking nearby or if the rent comes with a parking space. Usually, I think parking spaces range from around 90 euros a month to maybe 100, 120 a month. Right. Yeah. But the catch is it, parking is really hard in the major cities. Um, here in Valencia, it's super hard. So finding a spot on your own building can be a challenge. Also, another thing to consider would be storage. Um, some apartments have a storage space in the garage. We, I think, saw two apartments that had not only a garage space or a parking space, but also had some storage space that was included in the rent. So that might be an important option for you if you have like a bike that you need to store or a, a cello or something, <laughs> sports equipment, skis, I don't know, that you need to store that storage could be another thing that you might need to look for. So that's it. That's our list. Hopefully it helps. I don't know if we missed anything. We'd love it if you tell us and put it in the comment section below. But I think from what we remember, that's pretty much it. That's why it's an uneven number um, because we tried to list down everything as much as we can. It's a random number, yeah. 
I don't even know how many. But yeah, that's everything that we learned from our apartment hunting here in Spain. If you're moving to Spain or visiting Spain or just like going on an adventure, we would really highly suggest that you follow us and subscribe and watch our videos because I feel like it's going to help you guys out a lot. And if you think that this video helped you a lot, please make sure to watch the next video, which is going to come up pretty soon. Okay, Adios. thank you. Bye. Gracias.